And then an and one going to the rim. Stokely kind of fearless, and the Terps, late in that first half, were able to just kind of sustain some offense and cut a 10-point lead to three. And that's where we begin. Yeah, they closed the half on a 9-2 run, but quickly a turnover by Maryland, which was one of the big storylines in that first half. Ridley denied. Ashton Pankey with the block shot. Stokeland at the other end gets the roll, and it's a one-point ball game. And add insult to injury. You know, they, some coaches say you get Wilson knocked in your head if you bring it in weak. He literally got a Wilson tattooed in his head as Ridley's going to, Taj Ridley, who played really well against Purdue. Gets the ball just thrown right back in his eye. He's going to go sit down on the bench. This is a perfect block. Ridley, the junior college transfer, tried to head fake, didn't work. Or was it a hand that came was it down? Was a little finger? Down. Yeah, it might have been a little finger. Either way, Ridley was such a big part of the first two games uh. for Iona. Has had no imprint so far in this one. I like Kyle Smythe. Boy, he has a quick, quick release. He knows his role. He averaged 10 per game last year, third team all MAC preseason this year. His dad stopped me after his last game. Took three charges last game. He had 34 charges last year. His dad said, can you tell Kyle this, he doesn't have to be the only guy to take a charge? <laughs> He's already had multiple surgeries because of taking charges. Zubre lays it in. And Zubre is a tough cover because he's only about 6'4", 6'5". But he's so quick. And then they push the basketball so quickly that they get it up before you can even get your hands up. So Panky was in position. It was almost like they stunned him with the speed by which they pushed the ball down the floor. Faust. Into the corner, Stoglin no, and here comes Machado, all by himself. One on two, and it's knocked away from behind by Stoglin. Coaches will tell you all the time, don't compound a mistake or miss shot by not getting back. Faust already back defensively, giving them balance. Credit Stoglin, misses a corner jump shot, sprints back. Deflects the ball from Scott Machado. Faust is somebody Maryland needs to get going. He had a quiet first half with three personal fouls, played only 10 minutes and did not score. Jones with a bucket for Iona. It's those little lapses at the defensive end and shot selection at times at the offensive end, but Iona's a team which someone's going to get this DVD. Getting ready for the NCAA tournament. They see the Gales on their on their bracket. You need to be very afraid because they can really score. Momo Jones with a blind pass, and it leads to a Glover dunk at the other end. It's an 8-0 Iona run and a blocking foul called against Dezouvre. That last sequence, though, Doug, kind of summarizes yep. Iona. In a nutshell. Yeah, what is Iona? Iona stretch you all over the court defensively. They make you play kind of erratic. They almost dare you to take some of these open shots. And then we're getting it. We're going. We're running. But it's not like they're just, you know, old school New York City. All they can do is put it on the deck, create for themselves, and throw it off the window and in. You know, you have right now on the floor with Smythe and Momo Jones, two, you know, Smythe, a prolific three-point shooter. Momo, a good three-point shooter. A really talented inside scorer in Glover, and then Azubre, a, Azubre, a, a spectacular athlete, is a little bit undersized, but rangy and makes up for it with effort. Then you got a trigger man who Machado. finds them all. He is the maestro for this Iona offense. Mosley's two free throws snaps the Iona run. Jones off the curl. Perhaps got away with a little hook. Gets himself to the bucket for two. Well, after playing poorly on Friday, turning the ball over seven times, Momo Jones apologized to his coaches for his performance, and he has played much better so far. Nice. Here. Faust, the freshman for two. Back the other way, Jones. Knocked out of bounds. And again, only three seconds off the shot clock. 
Three seconds gone off the shot clock, and they're getting it already on their second part of the possession after Jones had it knocked out of bounds. Major growth from Faust there. With composure, taking the ball up against the press. Then scoring when the defense determined he should score. Nice job by the officials to confer. Yeah, Bobrovsky. Sometimes you say, you know, red, and you point the other direction. And that's simply what happened. And Randy Heinemann came in to help him out. The right team keeps the ball. Iona with 27 on the shot clock. Glover trying to carve out space. Faces up to the left hand. And a foul call. So Glover will go back to the free throw line. See Tim Clues came over from Stony Brook, who's a longtime high school coach in New York on Long Island. Maybe most interesting was that he actually coached Scott Machado in Machado's freshman year before he left to go to the college game, before Machado left and eventually ended up at uh, St. Benedict's in Jersey. That was eight years ago. Yeah. Seven years later, they end up back together on, on Iona's campus. Bit of a surprise hire. So far, the results have been very good for Iona. Last year in Clouse's first season, they went 25 and 12. Glover and Machado were first conference all-stars. Here's Faust from way downtown. Iona again with numbers. Machado give it back to Jones, and the finger roll draws a block. Goes against Stoglin. You know, Mark Turgeon is kind of at a loss. You know, as Faust closes out, full runs at him, that's, you have to know who you're closing out to. This coming off of taking a terrible shot at the offensive end, and Mark Turgeon's muttering to himself, constantly coaching, talking to his staff. You don't want to destroy a freshman's confidence. Uh, on the other hand, you can't have a guy shoot you out of a game when you just battle into kind of hang around. Faust has to know what a good shot, what a bad shot is. Jones now with 11 points. Glover leads Iona with 13 points. Stoglin with the pull up. Oh. Ball comes to Jones. Machado back out to Smythe, and Iona will back it out. Timeout on the floor, Iona with a 10-point lead, 50 to 40. We'll take a break and come back to Rainey San Juan right after this. Well, if you've ever been to the Caribbean, you know that they can have huge downpours, huge rainstorms, and apparently that's what's been going on outside. So we've had trouble getting our satellite signal out the last couple of minutes. We apologize for the problems, but 
as long as the rain goes away, we'll be able to bring you more basketball here. Doug Sherman, Doug Gottlieb on the final day of the Puerto Rico tip-off. There's a good look at one of the young fans made the trip from Maryland to root for the Terps. But so far in this one, Doug, the Terps have been playing catch-up. Well, they've turned the basketball over. You know, 17 turnovers in the game. That's allowed Iona. I mean, Iona's only 3 of 14 from three-point range. Now they're shooting 21% from three-point range. But they're winning this game because they've taken 12 more shots. 12 more shots than the Terps have. So uh, Maryland has to first and foremost not turn the basketball over. And then they can't get into a, a you know, a, an up and down game with Scott Machado, as you see, already has 10, already has the tournament's all-time assist mark. That was only two games in. Mm -hmm. And per my prediction, I said by the end of three games, he will double the previous all-time assist mark. He's well on his way. And the previous record was held by USC's Daniel Hackett from a couple of years ago. And you're right, Machado, as long as he stays on point, has a very good chance of making you a profit. However, since Maryland closed to a one-point ball game at 37-6 before that bucket, Iona had been on a 13-4 run. Once again, Smythe oh, right back at oh, it. Four oh. seconds after getting the ball inbounded, they've got the ball in the hoop. Parker got it poked away by Machado, who is called for the foul. And Parker, who struggled with four turnovers in the first half, and that's why he sat so much of the first half. Gets the ball in the middle of that press, and for the first time, maybe all game, no one steps in front to take a charge. Machado pleading his case, falling on deaf ears, and Parker at the free throw line. Sophomore from Washington, North Carolina. Who on the year is averaging six points per game. Barely played as a freshman last year, only 80 total minutes. Yeah, he's a player who you'll watch him. He had a fadeaway jump shot Friday. You watch him, and he'll make a move here and there, and you'll say, why doesn't he play more? And there are just there are some holes in his game in terms of you know, shot making, intensity. There's no he doesn't really have a position. But he does have some talent, does have some skill. He's got a pretty good opportunity with such a slim bench to earn some more minutes here later on this afternoon. And as I say that out, he comes. <laughs> now just missed two free throws. Yeah. Tomorrow night, two of the top schools in women's hoops battle on the hardwood, Stanford and Connecticut. Tiffany Hayes and the fourth ranked Huskies looking to avenge a loss from a year ago. Women's college basketball on ESPNU tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern. Good long look at Jonathan Thomas. Good chance to see the former walk-on play extended minutes. Hit a three in the first half. Maryland's SID, Doug Dahl, came over at halftime and asked if we had any eligibility. <laughs> since Mark Durgeon has tried to use as many as possible. Testing the limits of preparation from the broadcast room. Well, you have no more eligibility left. I do, but I don't think I would help what is ailing them. Actually, I hate to be an eligibility snob, but even if you don't play, your eligibility begins one when you enter college or two at 26 years old. That's when your clock starts. And, and as much as you see that five freshmen, four sophomores, junior, and three seniors, doesn't necessarily do it justice because you know, in terms of true scholarship players, there's only really seven, the eighth being a former walk-on. They're waiting for P. Sean Howard to get back from his foot injury, and Alex Len, the seven-foot-one Ukrainian, to be eligible. Pichon made the trip to Puerto Rico. He is with the club and continues to be a member of the team on the road and at home. Foul against Mosley. While Len is back in Maryland, and with the suspension, he is unable to travel with the team, and he will join the team on the court for their game against Albany in College Park. Ball just slipped out of... The hands of Sean Mosley. And instantly, it's an Iona track meet. Tim Kloos has his club well conditioned, and they are off to the races at a moment's notice. They do have a little bit of team ADD, though. 
We saw this against Western Michigan in the Constellation Semi, where they'll get a big lead to the far superior team, and then all of a sudden the other team will just hit a couple of shots and they'll stop executing. Is Oubre, no. On the offensive glass, it's Glover with the putback. Iona's pressure causing Maryland fits. Uh, that's DeZouvre coming off of his man, reading the long pass, and nearly getting the deflection. Smythe likes being on the basketball. I, I would put DeZouvre on the ball because he's so quick and long and range. Smythe's pretty good on the ball on, on the point of that pressure as well. Faust. That's a much better shot. And always be results based. Wow. Zubre gathers and puts it in. Does he still get an assist for that? I mean, listen, if you're playing at home, you kind of wink at the, to the scorekeeper and you say, give me one. Of course, I'm asking the wrong guy. Of course, uh, it's going to be an always, assist. Always, absolutely. Is it, would, did the pass lead to the bucket? Absolutely, and I think it should be an assist, too. If I wasn't sitting here talking to you, I'd still say the same thing. Right. Right, here's what we're talking about. In transition, last year second in the country in assists. Even got announcers begging. Scorekeeper, give me a dime. Welcome back to the five hour energy Puerto Rico tip off here in San Juan at the Coliseo de Puerto Rico. Some of the fans have made the trip down from New Rochelle, New York, just north of New York City, rooting for their Iona Gales, one of the top mid majors in the country. And Doug, you've made a list of five others who are underrated. Yeah, well, I chose not to put Iona on that list. Uh, Long Beach State obviously is the, all they lost while well, they lost to San Diego State. Uh, yesterday on the road, Long Beach State's gone into Pittsburgh and gotten a win. They play a ridiculous schedule, but Casper Ware at the point. Uh, Dan Munson's team is terrific. Fairfield, Stags lost really to Providence. I still believe Sidney Johnson in his first year with BC transfer for Kim Sanders, as well as a lot of talent coming back. I think those are the two top teams in this league. Keep an eye on Greg McDermott's Creighton Blue Jays. Doug McDermott, his son, is best player. And then St. Louis, old colleague Rick Majerus. They beat Washington earlier today by 13 at home. All the A-10 folks are abuzz saying that the Billikens are a team they, they believe is NCAA tournament worthy. Stoglin stepped on the sideline, gives it back over to the Gales. When you have guys like Orlando Johnson, the stud for UC Santa Barbara, a Loyola Marymount transfer, played in the under-22 national team. There's some good players at the mid-majors throughout this country. More so than a decade ago? No, I, I, I think it's very, very similar. I, I think their ability to be their more ability to be more competitive than they were a decade or so ago. Robert keeps working. 
And this is great for Iona. I mean, Iona would never get Maryland and Purdue in, you know, not once, let alone twice on a neutral court. As Mike Glover, the good pump fake. Pageant with the shot block. Glover trying to keep it alive. And jump ball call. It's right call. But a chance to play them on a neutral floor. Yeah. yeah. They took Purdue down to the wire, lost by one, and they're up 14 in the second half on Maryland. And I've long thought that the true bracket buster should be the top teams from the mid-major conference against the middle teams from the major conference. What ends up happening with the bracket busters is the teams beat each other. That's why Wichita State, who lost to VCU, VCU gets into the NCAA tournament. Wichita State does not. Sometimes the bracket buster becomes an elimination game, which is not the original intent of the bracket buster. But those middle of the road Power Six teams would never want to play those games, right? Correct. Jones, like we saw on Friday, taking an extra step before the dribble, and every single time. He's called for a travel, and every single time he looks at the official and goes, what? No, he, he didn't look at the, I, I'll give Momo Jones credit there. He did not look twice, he didn't stop, but he's got to be frustrated. Leading the tournament in travel calls. <laughs> travel violation. We are back at the Five Hour Energy Puerto Rico tip-off in San Juan, along with former Oklahoma State Cowboy Doug Gottlieb I am Doug Sherman. Doug, uh, people ask all the time, how do how do I know if my school's mid-major? Now look at the name on the back of Scott Machado's jersey, the size of, of Machado. And then look at the back of, say, a Momo Jones' his jersey. We'll be able to show you the difference in high major, mid-major. There's, there's a couple of things you need to know that are pretty Easy, honest ways to tell. Are we a higher mid major. Out of the timeout, Maryland gets a terrific look, and Sean Mosley buries the three. And, and in Mosley's defense, that's the first set that's been run for him since he hit his early jump shots. Went on balance, went in rhythm. A good, solid open jump shooter. Clever. Travel. So consecutive turnovers for the Gales. I think with his quickness advantage, instead of always trying to catch with his back to the basket, a couple times in the tournament we've seen him face up, kind of reverse pivot, Sigma move, if you will, sweep, face up, and go by people. And use that speed and length to get that extra step. Here come the Turks. He's got 13, as does Mosley. 
11 minutes left, and it's back to a nine-point game. Machado put his head down, and Stoglin's going to be whistled for the foul. Third on Stoglin, sophomore from Tucson. Out of Santa Rita High School, averaging 20 per game so far this year through three games. There's Glover facing up, trying to get around the bigger defender, Panky. Who's called for the foul. That's what I mean. There, there are times in which he's not a great, pure, low post player. But he's very, very agile for a guy who's legit 6'8". So if he gets it, he can just kind of swing, swing, sweep, face up, and go by. And if Panky not stuck out his knee, he probably would have got another hooking violation or offensive foul called. That's how he was able to keep Glover in front. A lot, of, a lot of condensation at this end of the floor. We've got a problem with it just about every game. Just going to say the uh, fouls continue to mount for the Terrapins, as you see there. Five different players already with three fouls. Scott Machado, who has really become the leader as a senior, barks at one of his teammates and gets Jones for an open three. Faust comes away with it, and here come the Terrapins. Stoglin blocked by Smythe. Padgett puts it in. If you can keep them in front and make them guard you, and, and then, excuse me, and make them run offensive sets, make them make contested jump shots. Iona does have this kind of team ADD, and then Pharrell Stoglin, this is tremendous defense from Smythe. Smythe recovers, blocks the shot. Panky somehow gets his hands on the basketball, and Padgett puts it up and in. You can get easy buckets, you can get layups. But it's more what Maryland's doing at the defensive end to frustrate Iona. And pretty quickly, Maryland has cut the lead in half from 14 down to seven. Tonight, the Charleston Classic presented by Foster Grant concludes on ESPNU. First, Tulsa meets St. Joseph's in the third place game at 6 Eastern. And at 8 o'clock Eastern, Northwestern takes on Seton Hall in the championship game. The DirecTV Charleston Classic presented by Foster Grant on ESPNU tonight. Her Pope averaging 19 and 12 and a half. Her Pope, who of course nearly, he's nearly died twice in his life. Once when he was shot in his hometown, Aliquippa, and once in a postseason workout when he had applied to enter the NBA draft. Herb Pope is a, is a tremendous low post player at about six foot seven. And one of the great rebounders in the Big East, if not in the entire country. And Jordan Theodore, a really, really athletic guard, averaging about 20 and five assists. Of course, they're playing for former Iona head coach Kevin Willard. Willard, an assistant at uh, at Louisville as well for Rick Pitino. And of course, his, his dad was the head coach at Pitt and Holy Cross, and then most recently Louisville. Well, the Rick Pitino coaching tree continues to grow. Uh, it's, it's what happens is Panky throws the, through the ball in the face of one of the Iona players. Yeah, the officials are reviewing while we're watching some of the crowd here at the Coliseo. And we are seeing on the replay the officials making sure that something untoward did not occur. Hey, here's what here's what they're looking at. Watch after the basket. Hey, Panky gets the ball, throws it right in the face of Glover, and then of course Machado says, yo, he threw the ball in his face. <laughs> you can read lips. Yeah. Nice. I even got the yell. That's quite a talent. But what do you think? Was that worthy of getting a call? I think it's really stupid of Panky. Really stupid. To climb back into the game, it's a seven point game. What are you doing? And though it doesn't look like they're going to call a foul or a technical foul, the first time Mike Glover gets the ball, if Panky's <laughs> anywhere near him, there's going to be a foul called on him. 
Warning delay of game, I love that. Glover, Machado, Jones, DeZubre, and Smite on the floor for Iona in their road maroon and gold uniforms. Midway through the second half, Jones the pull up. 13 now for Momo. Loves to come back to that left hand. He gets in that left hand. He is so dangerous because he can just a little step back to the left and fade away. Fifteen to shoot. Padgett on the low block. Up and under in the foul on Glover. That is his third if it's called on I think him. It's gonna be on Momo Jones for reaching in. Watch Momo come in and when Glover turns around. Is on Momo or is yeah. Momo, you're right. Yeah. Good call, Doug. Either way, it's the third foul on one of the Gales, and it goes against Momo Jones. So take a look at the back of Momo Jones' jersey. Now remember, he's new to the team. Okay, so that's Machado. Yep. Okay, now look at it. Same uniform. And wait a second, we'll get you Momo Jones. It would be much smaller font. Still efforting. <laughs> it's, it, the, the, the font word. is far, far smaller. <laughs> far smaller. So my read on that is new players, same jerseys, Probably different company doing the lettering in one year to the next, whereas Maryland, Under Armour gets them new jerseys every year. Momo Jones, who just convinced his head coach to keep him in the ball game with those three personals, fires it off the glass and in. And as a guard with nine minutes to go, you can play with three fouls, you can play with four fouls. Mosley, Padgett the offensive rebound. Bounce to the corner for Mosley. Well short again, long rebound again, comes back to Maryland. Stoglin, little floater now. And he picks up the foul. All right, so here's the here's the here's the aforementioned jerseys. See the difference in the font size? Same jersey, different font size. Machado now, Wade, veteran, Jones newcomer. Right. So, listen, there's there's a limit in terms of budget. Maybe had they made the NCAA tournament, they had different uniforms this year. But you see Smythe, Machado, those Glover, those guys are vets. Yep. The new guys, little numbers, yep. little names, same number, little names. And that's the way it goes when you are not in the ACC. Sure. If you play guarantee games on the road, you're a mid-major. Yep. If you have names that are a different size font, you're a mid-major. A mid-major is not a bad word. It's a word that it delineates the yeah. haves from the have-nots in terms of money. Truthfully, there's you know super high major, high major, mid-major, and low major. Right. That's how coaches discuss, discuss it when they're talking about coaching jobs and how players being recruited as well. Wow, what a drive. Machado. Fends off the defender with that upper body strength and lays it in. Well, he's got that big left to right crossover, and then he's got strong shoulders in which once he kind of gets a step on you, he leans those shoulders in in order to create space going to the basket. Take away by DeZubre. Four on two, Momo Jones right to the rim. Uh, this is a lesson for for not just Maryland, but Nick Faust especially. Young freshman, not really a point guard. Turning the ball over, now another turnover for Parker. Machado, wow. This is called the parlay. And once Iona gets a little momentum, they get a bucket, a layup, a turnover, and a steal. Parlay in one bucket, into two, and now the lead is 17.
For the third straight game here in San Juan, Scott Machado has himself a double-double. Okay, so what I want you to do, your assignment, okay, until we next meet, Doug okay. Sherman. All right. So I want you to watch Kendall Marshall. We'll text and tweet back and forth. Absolutely. As the comparison. Well, you know, Machado hasn't shot the three well. You know, he doesn't really have a mid-range pull-up jump shot. He, he, he is, a, I think, a better shooter and, frankly, a better half-court threat going to the basket. Marshall's not a great finisher going to the basket. Machado is. When did we begin discussion? The discussion. Yes, Thursday uh, or Friday. 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 Because I'm. It was something that I was feeling watching, and in the in the tape that I had seen of Iona, it was something that I felt. And I understand that Kendall Marshall's a solid, solid player, and really changed the fortunes of Carolina. Yep. And there's no doubt they got really, really good last year when he took over. Another turnover, number 22, Dezouvre with the dunk. Quick answer by Stoglin. Here they come again. Machado with a chance for three. Terrell Stoglin made a very nice drop. I mean, he got the ball back, clearly upset at the turnover, got the ball back, but he was in position to stop Scott Machado. Machado was just too quick and explosive. It took him five seconds to get the ball inbounds, to dribble it up, to shake by him, and lay it in. If you're not impressed by Maryland, keep watching, because they're going to keep coming at you. Gales up 19 on the Terps. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. The no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com. Gildan, part of your life. And Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. Some of the images from around the island of Puerto Rico, from the rainforest to the caves, just some beautiful sights. Doug Sherman along with Doug Gottlieb here in San Juan. And the Iona Gales have been putting on a show. We've got our all-tournament ballot, and Mr. Gottlieb is already filling in line number one with S-C-O-T-T-M-A-C-H-A-D-O. -T -T this one's really easy. Okay, I got, I have, I have four other spots. We have, uh, you know, we have more basketball to be played in the third place game, the championship game. But Scott Machado has been really, really impressive. Maybe most impressive is there have been times when this game has gotten a little bit chippy, and you know, we saw. Panky threw the ball at Mike Lover's face. We've seen, you know, Stoglin has a, has a tendency to woof a little bit, make some noise when he's making a move. Machado just kind of seems a little bit above the fray. It doesn't really seem to bother him. Jones right back at the rim over the 6'10 defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Stoglin gets his pocket picked by Jones. Drop it back, Machado, back to Jones. To Zubre. Was that a pass? I don't think so, but it works just the same. And now Machado appears to be down on the floor and in a lot of pain. The bucket by Glover gives him 17 points. They're not checking out his leg, so. In, in an effort to not sound callous in any way. I mean, I, you just don't want anything to happen to a guy's legs. Let's see. Machado, he slipped. Again. Yeah. Huh. It's very slippery in that part of the floor. And, you know, there, there is ice traditionally underneath here, but it's not underneath now. And they have Zambonis, but it's not. When you play in arenas like this anywhere in the country, sometimes anywhere in the, in the world, you'll have ice, but then they have a kind of a thin um, cardboard kind of layer that separates it. And if it's warm outside, there's condensation. It, it, it's hard for me to explain why there would be condensation, but that area of the floor has had problems with people slipping the entire tournament. Yeah. And like you said, we are right on the concrete here. Yeah. There's no ice under us. Even though this is a, an arena that has had NHL exhibitions here, NBA exhibitions. But uh, you're right, for some reason, at that end of the floor right there, to our right as we sit, we have had for the last four days multiple players time and again go down. Well, here's a look once again at the tournament brackets as we go forward. Purdue and Alabama will play in the championship game tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. My partner, Doug Gottlieb, will join John Shambi and Hubert Davis for a three-man booth to call the 15th-ranked Crimson Tide against the Boilermakers. And good to see Scott Machado back up and about. Faust goes by Smythe. Stoglin got Jones off his feet. Hart hits the three. Machado giving room, and he hits. And that's the, the, the part of his game that he's improved the most. It's very good balance, got good hand action. It's simply a matter of as fast as he is, as explosive as he is with the ball, settling himself down and taking good open jump shots. Nice looking shot by Mosley and a quick Maryland timeout. Well, when Mosley has had a little bit of space, had his balance, he's looked very good on that release, Doug. And the problem becomes, what are you going to do, press Iona? No. If you're going to press him, someone's going to be hanging on the rim. <laughs> In about three seconds. Yeah. And the, the depth on this Iona team really is impressive. It's not like they're going 10, 11 deep just to do it. Every single one of those guys coming off the bench has shown that they can score and score quickly in a lot of different ways. We've barely seen Sean Armand here in this game, let alone in the second half. We haven't seen, you know, we haven't seen Rashad James or Jamel Jenkins in the second half. Jamel Jenkins had 10 points in the first half against Purdue. So it's a deep team. It's an athletic team. It seems to be a team that at this point enjoys playing together. Now, look, you're going to hit some stretches in which you lose some games. And that's really when, when it's going to test the fortitude of the team. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how exactly you plan to press. Well, he turns the ball over. If I'm Machado, you want to catch the ball on the opposite side of where they take the ball in so that the man who doubles is on the basketball and he's got a longer run to come at you and he can split the double team quite easily. Foul on to Zubre. And again, we apologize for the rain fade. We are here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. That is immersed in heavy rain. Right. 
Smythe knocked it out of bounds. Think about this if you're Iona, okay? Look at the number of road games that they have in a row. At Canisius, at Niagara, at Denver, at Marshall, at Richmond, at Virginia, at Vermont, excuse me, at William & Mary, at Hofstra. They do not play a home game the entire month of December. Maryland with the basketball. Under five minutes remaining in regulation. Pass deflected out of bounds by Machado. It'll be Maryland ball on the sideline. Machado still playing hard on his third straight double-double, and you just saw him again exhorting his teammates to pick up the defense. Thomas, no. Nice. Machado to Glover. It is a broken record. That is a dime. And again, we'd like to apologize as we continue to lose our signal on and off because of the heavy rains here in Puerto Rico. Faust, way off the mark again. Mosley now with 18. Machado goes right around Thomas, who gives up the foul. It's as easy as that. Well, I mean, Thomas, you know, I, listen, I, I know you may think you can get, you can't get that close to him. Don't, he's gonna go by you. We'll take a break with 3.59 on the clock. Iona looking to knock off the Maryland Terrapins. San Juan, Iona with a 76-59 lead late over Maryland. Coming up on ESPNU, the Big East Women's Volleyball Championship from the Al McGuire Center in Milwaukee. It'll be Notre Dame versus Cincinnati. Sam Gore and Kelly Tennant on the call. That's as soon as we are finished here with this ball game between Iona and Maryland, and again, we are Enduring heavy rainstorms outside the building here in San Juan, so we have periodically off and on suffered what is called rain fade. So if you lose the signal for a time, we apologize. Just understand that as the rain ebbs and flows, hopefully we'll get our signal back to full strength. Scott Machado at the line, who Doug Gottlieb has already filled in on the all-tournament team on his ballot. I've been told that my ballot weighs he is weighted heavily. <laughs> That's what I've been told. By who? I got a source. <laughs> I got a source. Machado has been just really impressed. With this sure thing. has. I mean, I, I, I've got a chance to spend some time. And one of the great things about these tournaments is coaches get a chance to really watch and scout other teams. And you can appreciate other uh, the talent in other teams. Everyone to a man has been impressed with Machado. Boy, he has great feel. Gets everybody the ball in his rhythm. Has a nice way in which he handles himself. But still very competitive. Has he been the most impressive player here so far, Doug? Uh, yeah, and I, I think everyone feels good for Robbie Hummel. You know, Robbie Hummel is a 
heck of a ball player, was an All-American, goes down with a knee injury, comes back too early probably and tears his knee up again. And you know, 24 the first night, 20 the second night, hit the game-winning three the first night against Iona. And then the game-sealing fadeaway bucket in the semifinals. Kazoo oh. relays it in off the Glover miss. And obviously, when we, uh, it comes time later tonight to fill out that ballot fully, there's an Alabama player or two who's going to wind up oh, on no that uh, list and perhaps be the most outstanding player of the tournament. Yeah. Tony Mitchell's been shooting the ball really well. She's 42% from three so far this year. But the, the, Momo Jones gets the lay in and the and one off another Scott Machado pass. You know, a team that last year struggled to hit jump shots has, has hit enough. Here's Machado. Again, it's the feel. There's some, a lot of guys just don't see it. They just don't see the openings. They don't see the defenses and, and, and the angles of those defenses that create the openings for shots. There are other guys that see it, but can't deliver it the right pace in the right rhythm. He is an excellent passer in all the different phases. And maybe most impressively, as we're getting ready to, on ESPN2 to switch over, and you'll watch Juan Fernandez from Temple. Fernandez is a good passer, but he tries to be too fancy. He hasn't had any fancy passes. There's nothing fancy about what Machado's done. But you don't lead the country in assists with one fancy behind the back, you know, or one off the backboard alley. -oop. You do it by throwing 10 good passes a night. They make seven or eight, and you end up leading the country. Well, Machado had 26 assists in the tournament before this ball game. He's got 14 and counting. Make it 15 and Momo scores. That's 15 assists. That matches his total from Friday against Western Michigan. What was the what was the previous 22 for the entire event by right. Daniel Hackett at yeah. USC? How's he doing so far? He's got 30 in the last two games. He had 11 in the first one. Okay, so 30 and 11 is 41. The Almost previous double. Hot, I know. Well, he's going out of the ball game. Ah, ah. that's a crime. <laughs> No doubt our five-hour energy player of the game, Scott Machado. Now you see the 41 assists for the tournament.